Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, and welcome to our global launch of the Reflection and Action to Improve Self-Reliance and Effectiveness. My name is Kate Graham, and I'm the Senior Program Officer for the Challenge Initiative and the moderator for this webinar. And in about five minutes when we get started, you will hear from government and global leaders about how they use RAISE to evaluate the quality and effectiveness of their activities and hear about the challenges, successes, and impact the RAISE tool has had in the field. So again, we will be getting started soon and welcome to our webinar. Before we get started, we wanted to go through a few housekeeping reminders. French translation is available, so we ask that you please select English or French at the bottom of your screen. You will be muted throughout the presentation, so if you have any questions, please place those in the Q&A section, and they will be answered throughout by our panelists. If after the webinar you have more questions for us, please feel free to reach out and we'll share an email address at the end of the presentation that you can send your questions to. If you have questions on logistics, like your sound isn't working or challenges with translation, please place those in the chat box and we will try to assist you as best as we can. The presentation is being recorded and we will share that with all those that have registered for the presentation. And lastly, if you would like to view the tool in more detail, a link to the raise will be shared at the end of the presentation. So we will have both English and French presentations. So please select either English or French. And with that, we again welcome you to our webinar on RAISE. And we will get started in just about a minute where you will hear from Kojo Loco, TCI's Executive Director. So welcome again. Hello, my name is Kojoloku and I'm the executive director of the Challenge Initiative. I am particularly pleased to see a wide range of participants attending this webinar. Welcome. I'll use the next few minutes to create a context um, for TCI for the purposes of um, this webinar. TCI's goal is to support greater self-reliance of local governments to scale up family planning and AYSRH high impact interventions leading to sustained improvement in urban health systems and increased use of modern contraception, especially among the urban poor. TCI, which started in 2016, is an innovative platform that incentivizes political and financial commitments from urban local governments to implement a collection of evidence-based high-impact interventions. TCI's primary engagement is with municipal stakeholders, which is particularly critical in an environment where most countries have decentralized governance structures where the financial, administrative, and service delivery functions are the responsibility of subnational units. TCI's best practice interventions are right-fitted for the local context and updated through continuous learning and housed 
on the TCI University, our online coaching and learning platform. If government can self-reliantly implement these best practices, then both the health impact gains and the improvements of the health systems can be sustained. To date, TCI has supported 111 local governments in 11 countries through five regional hubs to support the implementation of family planning and AYSRH high impact interventions for the urban poor. Our partners, led by the Bill and Melinda Gates Institute, are Johns Hopkins Center for Communication Programs, IntraHealth, JAPAIGO, PSI, and Zwilik Family Foundation. TCI is built on four foundational interlocking tenets, scale, impact, efficiency, and sustainability. And these are the heart of its philosophy. We believe that scaling without impact is empty scale. Impact at scale without being more efficient is not viable. And efficient impact at scale that is not sustainable will not produce lasting change. TCI delivers on all four tenets, recognizing that one without the other three is inadequate to achieve enduring progress. Today, we will focus on the sustainability tenet and how we ensure local governments continue to implement their programs even when our engagement with them diminishes over time. So um, before we dive into the race tool, in a nutshell, the tool is a management and organizational institutional sustainability tool for cities or subnational geographies. We have with us also two of our primary donors from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and Bayer AG. Allow me to introduce um, two um, um, persons from um, the donors that will um, share some few words with us. From the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, we have Gwen Hatesworth, and from Bayer AG, Michael Hedia. So um, Gwen, over to you, and, um, and then um, Michael, you come after Gwen. Thank you. Thank you, Kojo. Again, my name is Gwen Hainsworth, and I'm a senior program officer on the family planning team at the Gates Foundation. It's truly a pleasure to be here with all of you today to discuss how the RAISE tool can support sustainable scale up of high impact interventions for family planning and adolescent and youth sexual and reproductive health, or AYSRH. Both within our new family planning strategy, as well as across the broader foundation, a stronger emphasis is being placed on fostering local ownership and building local capacity with an eye towards greater sustainability. Given limited donor resources, longer term gains in family planning and AYSRH outcomes will not be achievable unless governments take ownership for making progress against their own commitments and are able to generate their own solutions as well as lead and manage quality family planning and AYSRH programs using their own resources. TCI is one of the foundation's largest family planning investments. It's designed to support cities and local governments to sustainably scale up high impact interventions, including globally recognized high impact practices or HIPs through an approach that emphasizes local ownership, capacity building, system readiness, and continuous learning and improvement. TCI provides coaching and other support to strengthen a city or local government's technical and managerial capacity to sustain implementation of high impact interventions within its family planning or AYSRH program. To determine when a city or local government is ready to graduate from ongoing TCI support and move to a coaching on demand model, TCI needed a systematic and objective way to assess when a city or local government has reached a stage of self-reliance or sustainability. Noting that there was a shortage of tools which measured progress on a number of domains related to sustainability, TCI developed the RAISE tool. The RAISE tool uses a standard set of indicators that help cities and local governments reflect on their implementation progress across TCI's four pillars of sustainability, increased political and financial commitment, capacity strengthening, institutionalization of high impact interventions, and sustained demand. RAISE promotes organizational learning, fosters an environment of best practice sharing, and enables local governments to own their improvement plans. The tool is used directly by government staff in partnership with TCI, therefore increasing the likelihood that it will be sustained beyond TCI's investment period. 
It's currently being used by the 110 cities across the five PCI accelerator hubs. The aim is that as cities and local governments graduate, they'll take this process on themselves, continuing to develop action plans and ensure data is reviewed and used regularly for decision making. So far, the feedback from cities and local governments is that the tool is useful in strengthening their family planning and AYSRH programs. Today, I'm looking forward to hearing about the challenges, successes, and impact this tool has had in the field under TCI, and how going forward it can serve as a global public good to other donors, partners, and governments interested in scale-up and sustainability of high-impact interventions, including the global HIP. And with that, I'll turn it over to you, Misha. My name is Michael Herde. I'm not working in the philanthropic area, but for a German for-profit commercial company called Bayer as the director of sustainability and family planning. Bayer is a global healthcare company and as such a leading company in the area of family planning and women's health. We are supporting programs of United Nations Family Planning Agency as well as USAID and others already for decades as a supplier of modern hormonal contraceptives. Our vision is health for all, hunger for none. And to materialize and quantify this vision, we committed at the last United Nations International Conference on Population Development in Nairobi to provide access to family planning to at least 100 million women in low middle income countries by 2030. These are not just idle words. This goal, this 100 million goal, as we call it, has been institutionalized into BIOS DNA. It is audited and tracked by external auditors and reported in the company's annual reports and stock filings as a stock listed company. And last but not least, this achievement is linked to our company's management, remuneration, and incentive system. How to achieve this 100 million challenge? Um, what is our strategy? We work on two areas. Number one, product provision. Number two, capacity building. Product provision, we keep on providing to supranational purchasing mechanisms and national purchasing mechanisms to a range of modern hormonal contraceptives, such as oral contraceptives, injectables, implants, as well as IUDs. Second, capacity building. So we have chosen to engage with partners in capacity building, and for that we picked three settings. Number one, humanitarian setting. Number two, rural setting. And number three, urban underprivileged settings. The latter is our reason to engage with TCI as a donor. We strongly believe in the power of diverse partnerships. As such, we can learn from each other and better and more comprehensively address the needs of the population of the globe. How do we select uh, capacity building partnerships? We have clear must have criteria. First of all is, again, we need to address our sustainability challenge. We gave ourselves 100 million women by 2030 who have their needs for modern contraceptives satisfied due to interventions supported by our company. Number two, we want in this partnership a systematic approach with measurable output data driven towards this 100 million goal. We're looking for scalable interventions with clearly defined outcomes. We want to strengthen systems towards resilience and self-reliance. This is what we call sustainable. And by that, we want to develop over time a donor independence of systems and bodies. Lastly, please let me allow a comment on the race model, the topic of this webinar. Over the last years, the word sustainability became very fashionable, very en vogue. But how to measure it? How do we know a program in capacity building has become a success? How do we define success? How do we quantify uh, assess in capacity building and system strengthening investments in terms of lasting changes in structures, behaviors, policies of organizations and administrations? And how we measure whether changes in the DNA of such bodies are occurring? How can we put numbers behind? And I believe TCI compiled a wealth of experience on measuring 
success in capacity building. With this, I'm looking forward together with you towards this webinar today to learn about the challenges, success, and impact of the race tool and which it has in the field. Thank you and looking forward to a good discussion. Thank you so much, Misha. We will now be talking about the reflection and action to improve self-reliance and effectiveness tool, a tool that has been developed by the Challenge Initiative. The tool is developed to assess the quality and sustainability of... Thank you so much, Misha. We will now to be talking about the reflection and action to improve self-reliance and effectiveness tool, a tool developed by the Challenge Initiative. This was developed to, to assess the quality and sustainability of TCI's high impact family planning and AYSH interventions in each implementing city and state. The tool is meant to be used directly by the local government staff in order to foster ownership and commitments towards sustained successful family planning and AYSH programs. TCI provides technical coaching to local governments as they move through the RAISE assessment process integrating approaches from the TCI University. Activities key to TCI success in each city and state includes measuring the intensity of family planning and AYSRH program implementation, implementing course corrective measures, maintaining quality during rapid scale up, encouraging local ownership that leads to sustainable and engaged stakeholders in decision making in a meaningful way. The TCI staff uses this to measure the intensity and also to measure the progress towards sustainability of the family planning program in cities. The framework used for RAISE is around the four pillars, increased political and financial commitment, capacity strengthening, which are the two traditional indicators used to measure sustainability. In addition, institutionalization of high impact intervention and sustained demand are additional pillars that, are, that make the RAISE framework. While the RAISE tool assess capacity based on TCI's sustainable scale up pillars, focusing mainly on first three pillars, with e within each pillar, TCI utilizes the criteria to assess local government's capacity in family planning and AYSRH program. The criteria for the fourth pillar, which is around sustained demand, is measured through either TCI data collection or other monitoring efforts that take place. The stakeholders who are engaged in the RAISE assessment include representatives from both the political leadership as well as the health and technical leadership. There also is included the community focal person as well as the private sector partners are closely engaged. So are the community reps who participate in this assessment so that everybody's voice is heard and they are part of this decision making and action plan development. The intended outcomes being that the local health management teams are able to assess and evaluate the quality of TCI supported family planning interventions within their cities. Assess and assist to diagnose what coaching needs are required and hence this coaching is very tailored to the needs of the cities. Identify an implementation plan for the identified gaps such that sustainability domains develop a concrete action plan for improvement. It also facilitates effective use of data for decision making, ensures that there is learning created within the organization who's conducting the race to assessment, helps inform graduation decisions and identify coaching priorities and progress, both for the local health management as well as the TCI staff. It also facilitates the local government leadership and ensuring that there is ownership for the family planning program. The structure is such that individual identified to take part in the raise assessments are given the tool to complete prior to getting into a workshop format. Followed by this, the stakeholders discuss completed individual assessment in small groups. They complete the assessment form as a group and then get into the next phase of getting a consensus on the scoring. TCI staff facilitates the process in the initial rounds of the base assessment, following which the local governments fully take over the process and are even responsible for ensuring that consensus is reached. 
The consensus is reached by ensuring that there are documentations available for a scoring that a city decides that they want to score for each of those domains. As a result, an action plan is developed both for the challenge initiative staff as well as the local governments. TCI uses this action plan to ensure that their coaching need is tailored, which is intensive to start, and then it tailors off as, as the local governments take full ownership of their program and takes over the coaching. The local government uses this action plan to ensure that they are, they are taking care of what needs to be done, when, who's responsible, what resources are needed. A glimpse of how the stakeholders have conducted the race assessment um, with the COVID hitting, we realized that um, it may not be possible for the government staff to get together, but that didn't stop them from conducting race assessments. We see an example where they were able to get together in an outside setting, maintaining social distancing, or they were wearing masks and still committed to ensure that their assessment continues to get conducted on time and that the previous action items are being discussed. The, the process is such that these assessments are conducted on a quarterly basis. TCI, along with the health management team, reviews the final scores. The developed action items are then taken into consideration, and the health management time team utilizes this for their coaching, supervision, programming, and implementing course corrections. TCI team uses it to tailor their coaching plans and priorities along with the health management team. The action plans that are being developed are then shared with the relevant stakeholders. And these include the geography health directors, as well as the local leadership, which includes the mayor governors and deputy governors, who ensure that there is enough funding available to ensure that the family planning and AYSH program continues and get implemented at the right intensity. That there is political support for ensuring that family planning remains the priority for the city, that it doesn't take the back seat and the action items are being implemented. The scoring is done by ensuring that all indicators have been rated. A city may score anywhere between the beginning to a mature stage, which could be 54%, 55 to 69, 70 to 84, and 85 to 100%, which is when a city reaches a maturity status. The race tool has been utilized so far in measuring the progress and streamlining reporting. It has also helped shape the technical coaching and identify opportunities for even intercity learning where if a city is performing well, then these coaches from the health system are being used to start up a new city or even help a city which may be lagging behind in achieving certain milestones. It has also helped making decisions about graduation or self-reliance. And then also as the cities have reached the maturity or self-reliance status and are into a post-graduation phase to continue measure their progress to ensure that the scores do not go down. The tool has also helped strengthen advocacy efforts and these advocacy efforts could be around ensuring that the gatekeepers are aware about of the family planning and they are supported that there is more funding available for family planning program that the funding that has been committed also gets released for the family planning activities. It has also helped facilitate a leadership engagement within the cities. This is an example of a coaching plan that has been developed, whereby different health areas, whether this was about the health management information system or the utilization of the TCI University, which has all codified high impact interventions, or the coaching, which is done both by the TCI staff, as well as the health management teams. The action item includes a person who's basically responsible for ensuring that the deliverable um, is taken care of. There are timelines that are agreed and then the resources are also agreed as to what is needed to ensure that the action plan gets operationalized. The TCI uses both qualitative and quantitative indicators along with the city's health management team to measure the progress towards self-reliance. This include both qualitative and quantitative indicators. The qualitative indicators mainly come from the use of the RAISE tool. However, the most significant change stories, the tales of impact and success stories that are regularly conducted, uh, collected from the cities are additionally used to triangulate. In addition, the number of additional users and client volume, the sustained demand for family planning and other indicators tracked through project management information system are triangulated to make those decisions about the state in which a city is. 
an example of how the data has been triangulated for one of the cities that has partnered with TCI, whereby when they started their first round, the score was really at the beginning stage, but by the time they conducted, conducted their third round, the score had increased and they reached a stage of 79%. At the same time, TCI then helped the local governments to triangulate the data about the change in annual contraceptive users to be measured so that both the qualitative and quantitative measures are being used as the decisions are made about the maturity or sustainability of the city family planning and AYSRH program. The key areas that contributed to this increase included sustained demand for family planning, improved method mix, advocacy and use of data, coaching and public private partnership. And the different coaching activities that were conducted to ensure that these areas are bridged included coaching on data quality audits, high level advocacy and uh, advocacy on commodities, commodity redistribution, coaching between facilities, engaging the program implementation team members and regular use of these meetings, top leadership involvement in the race process. How TCI continues to apply the learnings as it continues to improve the race tool. It has so far been institutionalized in 112 geographies across East Africa, Francophone West Africa, Nigeria, India, and Philippines. While TCI works with the local governments to ensure that their family planning program is strengthened, alongside TCI continue to focus on the adolescent youth sexually reproductive health components. Hence, there was a need to ensure that these are uh, in the AYSRH component gets integrated into the race tool, which was done last year. And the city started to measure not just their progress towards general family planning program, but also how they focused on their AYSRH program. Since quantitative indicators is an important component, the MER indicators were clearly teased out and the data was used to ensure that there is quality in their dimensions, there's timeliness, completeness, accuracy of this data that has been used. More components were added around community engagement and the criteria was revised for scoring accordingly. In addition, as the COVID hit, there were changes that were adapted in how this, the RAISE assessment is conducted, with more of, most of these assessments being conducted offline using um, either um, Skype, um, using Zoom, platforms or maintaining social distancing and still completing those. It has also been observed by the local governments and we will very soon hear from them about how they have used this, that they feel that this has also helped them strengthen not just the family planning, but how the integration happens across different health areas. We will now hear from Larry Cooley, who's an expert on sustainability and scaling up and leads the scaling up community of practice group. He has led different programs and has been into this field for almost over two decades. Over to you, Larry. Thanks, Maheen, for, for introducing me and for asking me to, to be here today. And I'm really glad to have a chance to talk to all of you a little bit about the RAISE instrument, and particularly in the context of the work I've been doing for the last couple of decades on scaling. As some of you may know, this issue of scaling has now got quite a lot of attention. But if you go back just a few years, there were very, very few people talking about it. So for me personally, it's very gratifying to see the attention it's getting from people like TCI and like from all of you who are, who are joining us here today. What I'd like to say specifically, from my perspective as someone who's not a family planning expert, but who has worked with this issue of scaling for a long time, relates to the tool and the way it gets used to try and really make change happen. So let me make seven points very, very quickly about why I think this tool is doing something really quite important. Number one, this tool is building on a notion that's been growing around our industry that maturity models and particularly evidence-based maturity models are a very, very good way to look at change and to look at change over time. For that, I applaud it. And this is a very thoughtful example. There are others in other sectors. This is a very good application in my opinion to the family planning sector. The, uh, secondly, I really would like to emphasize the, the fact that this particular tool builds on a growing body of knowledge that it's possible and very desirable to try to integrate accepted global best practices with local contextualization. If you look at the elements of the, the raised matrix, it does that, I think, in a very nice way, both putting forward what's now generally accepted as standard practice or good practice, and leaving a lot of latitude for people to make adaptations to the local context. Number three, 
the use of real-time data, or at least near real-time data. A major focus is beginning to emerge that trying to collect data over time and in the usual traditional statistics-based way just isn't good enough to keep with the change processes that people need. I think that's well reflected in the RAISE methodology. Number four, the notion that somehow the system has to iterate. The idea that every three or six months, people would come back together again, reappraise the situation, not just in terms of progress, but in terms of changes in the context and what needs to be done and set action priorities based on that. Again, I think is very consistent and a good example of global best practice. Five, this notion that somehow, if we're going to make this work, it's not for a group of experts. It's really a facilitated multi-stakeholder process. The government plays a prominent role, but not the sole role in this. The government leadership, yes, but government dominance, no. And even within government, not a single ministry. Often the decisions that affect something, for example, in family planning are decisions that are made in the Ministry of Health. Number six, that the idea of leadership needs to transition as quickly as possible from the people who develop the tools, in this case, TCI, to the people who permanently need to deliver these services, that means the host country government and everybody else that supports the host country government. It may begin as a project. If it ends as a project, it's failed. It needs to go to become the new normal. And for that, the whole concept of project funding, project timelines needs to yield as quickly as possible, along with the leadership to the idea that this is a host country driven, host country run process. And finally, and maybe a little less obvious, the network of municipalities, in my opinion, is a very, very strong element of this and the ability, at least the potential ability to not only learn each from each other, but to support and encourage each other as this moves through time. Those are all on the plus side and I say them without reservation. I'm now gonna end with just a couple of things that I think are challenges going forward, not problems, but challenges. The first is that there are a lot of tools out there. And if people are using multiple tools, it simply confuses things. There are several good ones. So it's gonna be important if countries and municipalities really care about this, to decide if RAISE is the tool you wanna to use, let's agree we're gonna use it, let's all use it. The second is timelines. We're talking now two or three years into a process. In my experience, Permanent policy change and changes in practices is a 12 to 15 year process. So those of you who are in municipalities or working with them need to ask yourself, how do we sustain this? How do we plant this? Not for the short run, but for the long run. And those of you in TCI need to ask yourself, what can we do beyond what we've done to help make that happen? Number three, it's going to be important to think about the incentives that local leadership faces. And I mean, particularly incentives that cut across the normal silos. In other words, most of what happens in bureaucracies happens in individual organizations. But TCI and RAISE on purpose were set up to cut across a number of those. And I think that's correct. But trying to sustain that horizontal leadership over time and create real incentives for that is a challenge I promise you that will have to be faced again and again and again. Fourth and next to last, there are major issues that are not solved by skills alone. This focuses TCI and RAISE mostly on coaching, mentoring, knowledge sharing, and so on. But there are other incentives, financial incentives, bureaucratic incentives, sometimes political incentives that are going to play a major role in whether these things are sustained over time and you ignore those things at your peril. And finally, once again, on the issue of the network, I emphasize on the positive side, that the network of municipalities was a huge strength, a potential strength, but only if someone continues to nurture that network. And it's gonna take attention either from TCI or from those of you who make up the network to make that a sustained reality over time. I wish you everything by way of success in this process, and I congratulate you on what you've already done. Thank you so much, Larry. And now you'll hear from Florence Solomon from Tanzania. Florence, over to you. Hi, everyone. My name is Florence Solomon from Tanzania. I am Arusha City Family Planning Coordinator. I'll take you through RAISE tool representing East Africa. And this is my uh, 
presentation outline. I'll skip it. By introduction, uh, we started conducting raise on 2019, supported by TCI, but the council was the one which conducting it. And before COVID-19 pandemic, it was a face-to-face -face meeting. We are still doing it up to now, but we are observing uh, COVID-19 precautions for preventions. We are doing it at, after every three months. And the members of the RAISE team are council health management team who are city medical officer of health, uh, city secretary of health, uh, family planning coordinator, pharmacist, uh, reproductive and child health coordinator and others. But also we have a city community dev development officers who are youth and women coordinators. We have also city edu education office included. This is the average uh, raise score. We started with 50 and now we are above 95. During raise, there are gaps identified and the team had taken action to the identified gaps so as to, to overcome. Uh, first, uh, we did didn't have mission statement. Uh, action taken was to distribute the mission statement to all health facilities. Also, in the gap, we had some facilities that had no family planning uh, mix methods, especially the uh, private facilities. But also, uh, there was inadequate family planning skills among health providers. So the action taken was to train 60 healthcare providers on the comprehensive family planning, 30 from public and 30 from private, private facilities. Also, the other gap was, was local government budget were not uh, prioritized, prioritized for adolescents and the youth and the family planning services. But because we had those uh, treasurer and accountants in our raise meetings, the budget was increased up to 20% for family planning and YA uh, services. We also had uh, unreliable data for decision making. We decided to conduct the data quality assessment after every month. The other gap were involvement of youth in family planning services, and even some health facilities were not youth friendly. Action taken was to increase our health facilities, which provide youth friendly services from eight to 20. And in some of those health facilities, we deployed the signboards which show uh, which services are being provided there. So this one was done so as for good visibility and the branding of the youth-friendly services. So from here, you can see the different pictures we are taking during these actions. I'm going to take you through these pictures. This one shows the displayed mission statement in one of the health facility. The, this picture shows the integrated family planning outreach in industries so as to reach uh, more youth. This one shows the Adolescent and Youth Friendly Services Dialogue in the schools. One of the school is being conducted there. And this one shows the coaching and mentorship about family planning on how to insert implants in one of our health facilities so as to increase skills in healthcare providers. This one shows uh, data quality assessment was uh, going on. And the deployment of signboard is this one in one of our health facility. Uh, we, we get some results after conducting those activities. First of all, we, we advocate for multi-sectoral multi collaboration in family planning and AY. At first, these uh, activities were seems like they belong to health department only, but now we are including different people from different departments, as I, I explained before. But also raised 
raise her action plan helped to decrease teen pregnancy from 11.8 to 8.8. Also, we increased the number of health facilities which provide health, uh, family planning and youth friendly services from 80 to 20. Also, raise tool facilitated increase in the council budgeting for AY means the adolescent and youth friendly services by 20%. Uh, we also increased the uh, uh, contraceptive coverage modern methods from 44.3 to 65.3. This shows the increase among uh, family planning users in youth by 42%, increase among adult users of family planning by 26%. This is a decrease of teenage pregnancies, as I explained before, and this is the increase in contraceptive coverage modern methods. As we can see, uh, we have graduated from TCI, so Arusha City has planned to continue using raise tool uh, in planning and budgeting quarterly and make it useful in lower levels. So health facilities management teams will be using raise instead of being used by only upper management uh, teams that's how we are going to sustain this uh, issue otherwise together we can make a difference thank you thank you so much florence and now you will hear from jules kali from senegal jules over to you uh, bonjour tout le monde Je m'appelle Jules Poli, je suis le point focal de TCI Ville de Genève. Slide. Donc, euh, la Ville de Genève a adhéré le programme euh, euh, TCI depuis 2019 par la signature du premier sous-accord qui, qui concernait trois communes. La Ville de Genève qui est responsable, voilà, et Vignona et Ousoui. Donc, en 2020-2021, nous avons eu la chance de bénéficier de la deuxième phase du de TCA. Et cette phase a fait appel à, un nouveau, à une nouvelle collectivité locale, Tonkessi. Donc, c'était l'occasion de mettre en place le, la méthode RISE pour mieux exécuter le, le programme. Là. Donc, pour, euh, avec euh, le RISE, Donc, dans la mise en place du RAISE, nous avons identifié des acteurs qui devaient s'impliquer dans le programme. Donc, nous avons euh, la commune de Ziganchor, qui est le, le, le responsable moral, et les autres communes, donc les trois autres communes. Il y a le système de santé, donc il y a la région médicale, et nous avons le district de santé. Cela n'a pas suffi parce que nous avons vu qu'au niveau de Ziganchor, il y avait... Euh, Il y a, comme on l'appelle, les acteurs communautaires, c'est-à-dire les communications traditionnelles et les, et les Badiengor qui sont très impliqués dans euh, la planification familiale. Donc, il fallait aussi identifier, mettre en place un processus pour l'atteinte des résultats. Donc, c'est pour ça que nous avons orienté les acteurs communautaires dans le processus de mise en œuvre de ce réseau et identifié les facilitateurs. Donc, euh, nous avons aussi euh, mis en place l'outil de collecte des données on trouve au niveau des, des, des systèmes de santé, la, note, la, euh, la notation des indicateurs et des différents domaines. Donc, il y a l'identification du GAP qui va nous permettre euh, euh, de manifester l'élaboration du plan d'amélioration et du processus de vie. Il y a aussi la mise en place des actions améliorées, etc. Donc, le RIS aussi a permis de, trans, euh, de transférer des capacités. Donc, pour le, le, le transfert des capacités, donc ils ont bien réfléchi de prendre dans chaque commune, dans chaque collectivité locale, un point focal pour pérenniser les actions. Donc, euh, ces points focales euh, ont été renforcés euh, en termes hein, de, de compétences. Voilà. Il y a la mise en place aussi des poules de facilitateurs. Donc, ça veut dire que c'est les arrêtés que le maire a signés pour euh, les, les instances. Donc, comme le, le CCP et le CG. Donc, au niveau du gap constaté, dans la mise en œuvre du on a vu la faible 
la faiblesse des activités de génération de la demande. Il y a les difficultés liées à la mobilisation des fonds. Euh, on en a parlé sur les, les, les maigres fonds des, des collectivités locales. Donc, il y a l'absence de régularisation dans la mise en œuvre des activités de coaching. Il y a le déficit de mise à l'échelle des pratiques à, à, à haut impact dans, toutes les, dans tous les PPM. Il y a le faible engagement des élus dans la, planifi dans la planification et ses réalités. Donc, le RAISE euh, aussi euh, a permis une meilleure collaboration entre la municipalité et le système de santé. Et cela s'est manifesté dans la mise en œuvre euh, de, du programme par 15 réunions mensuelles de suivi et de planification des activités. Nous avons les cinq réunions de partage qui se font sur le CCP et l'UCG, les réunions de coordination et les revues des données trimestrielles de santé qui permet à la mairie d'avoir les données et voir comment utiliser les données dans les prises de décision. Donc, il y a aussi l'engagement des revues, donc par, par des sessions publiques de communication et surtout par des conseils municipaux euh, exceptionnels. Donc, pour les communautaires, pour les engagements communautaires, nous avons vu les réalisations des activités, des activités radiophoniques, puisqu'il y a des contrats avec les, les communautaires pour informer les populations. Il y a 1000 VAD qui sont réalisés, donc ça dit c'est les visites à domicile entre, avec le, le système de santé et les élus qui font les visites. Il y a la mobilisation des ressources locales. Donc nous avons euh, l'avantage que toutes les communes s'efforcent à budgétiser euh, euh, leur contribution pour le programme. Donc, euh, donc ça, les, ils, ils mobilisent environ 10% du budget du programme. Pour cette année, pour la deuxième phase, nous avons vu qu'il y a 61 seulement pour cent de, de, de contributions qui a été mobilisée. Les résultats que nous avons obtenus avec les RIS se manifestent dans les, nous donnons les, les données dans les quatre derniers trimestres, les deux, les deux derniers trimestres de 2020 et les deux premiers trimestres de 2021. Donc, la tendance est claire que euh, entre les nouveaux entrants dans le quatrième trimestre sont de façon grave. Les deux derniers trimestres de 2020 ont eu une augmentation au niveau des nouvelles entrants. Et aussi, euh, les actifs, il y a des légères baisses avec des, un peu, des, des, des hausses avec des, des, des baisses relativement faibles. Donc, c'est aussi bien que sur le deuxième, les deux derniers trimestres, les deux premiers trimestres de 2022. Donc, pour le taux de prévalence contraceptive, nous avons noté euh, régulièrement une, une croissance euh, sur les quatre, premiers, euh, les quatre premiers trimestres. Donc, nous avons avec le RIB, donc, euh, l'expérience que nous avons, donc, euh, le RIB permet euh, d'adapter la notion de la gouvernance locale, du gouvernement local, adapter la notion de gouvernement local en faisant ressortir plus ou moins les notions de municipalité et de système de santé pour faciliter la responsabilité des entités dans la mise en œuvre des plans d'action, respecter les fréquences financières de la mise en œuvre, donc ça veut dire les instances. Donc, on a appris avec les RIS euh, euh, que les, les deux entités, collectivité locale et le système de santé, donc, euh, peuvent euh, travailler ensemble et peuvent partager euh, des expériences dans la prise en charge des populations. Donc, nous avons aussi la tenue régulière des réunions des instances qui, est des, qui sont des, des, des moments très importants pour la mise en œuvre du programme et aussi pour les, les, les futurs du programme, la pérennisation du programme. Donc, les orientations aussi des parties prenantes près des villes sur la mise en œuvre et faciliter la réalisation de l'objectif. Merci pour euh, votre attention. Voilà. Et je reste à vos discussions pour des informations supplémentaires. Thank you so much, Joule. And now over to you, Dr. N.K. Jane from India. Thank you. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone. I am Dr. N.K. Jain, presently working as an additional chief medical officer in Jhansi. I feel proud to say that I witnessed holistic change in urban family planning scenario in Jhansi with technical support of TCI-SC. Next slide, please. 
especially i would like to share my experience regarding race tool introduced by tci this tool was introduced in my city in july 2020 as a nodal of family planning and urban health this tool helped me to observe the progress of city in each segment by a simple methodology and it reduced my time to reach individual regarding clarity on their roles and responsibility the most important thing of this tool is that it connect all department to look the city's progress as a whole and make consensus on action plan for improvement areas at that time we were hit severely for covid first wave in india there was country wide lockdown was imposed jhansi is a transient point connecting south west and east india by rail route and connecting north india to central india by road route with the start of covid pandemic and sudden rise in passenger passing through jhansi increase so many folks from april 2020 giving rise and risk to the enhanced case of covid 19 in the city approximately 0.5 million passengers crossed via jhansi during that, that period and the whole resource of health department were deployed in covid management in tracking testing treating of these passengers next slide please at that tough time we held first consensus meeting in september 2020 and during discussion of this second section regarding completeness timeliness and accuracy of hims data we observed a huge drop in family planning uptake in the city next slide please data we are reviewed based on hims and action plan was prepared to integrate the family planning services with covid management strategy since there was reluctance and risk of community in visiting the health facility and the same time many facilities were converted to covid response center infographic messages were deployed developed to sensitize the ans and asas to fulfill the demand of facility based family planning methods like icd and antra was a problem due to community hesitancy to visit facility but since we cannot leave the willing client without providing any method in absence of family planning services resulting in unwanted pregnancy next slide please two by two matrix help as to know the actual demand among the community and action plan mission pragati was developed to reach to this clients through home visit by ans and asa with family planning commodities along with covid tracking and testing strategy community based activity were organized to promote healthy behaviors including sexual behavior with tcisc and other partners we are also encouraged to pull their resource for bcc activity among among community services were picked up from october 2020 by ensuring the prioritizing home visit by enm and asas to reach the each patient each client in family need and regular supply of spacing method as per demand by team of district program manager and dvhc major step was taken that time that family planning was included as an essential services next slide please first wave of covid affected the family service family planning services badly and almost 6 month we struggled to streamline that in urban facilities facility based family planning method like iucd and dmpa is still an issue due to the fear of covid we learned from the challenges and strategy implemented during covid 19 first wave to streamline family planning services this give us the direction to face the second wave as you know all that second wave india was more hazardous we faced that tough time in april and may 2020 but learning from the first wave in rest us to fight with situation and within one month we overcame the situation 
although method makes a change, but in terms of kind, volume of family planning has been increased. Next slide. We use data for decision making tool in two pronged way. First, we did regular review of HIMS data to observe family planning uptake and use of two by two metrics to track ASA buys demand of family planning commodities. Secondly, we track number of household listed by ANM and ASA and family planning commodities utilized that gives the direction to plan the family planning commodities logistic and supply. Next slide. At least summarizing my statement, I would like to say a few things that race tool give us a holistic picture of our current status of urban family planning initiative so far in terms of sustainability it is a scoring system and making consensus approach that leads us for joint action plan which is a very necessary part of the sustainability this also work as an alarm to the on the clock which keep awakening us on where we have to focus for improvement the discussion on each domain of this tool provides each department of health to show where we are lacking and what we have to strategize. Next slide. I would like to thank PCI for providing this global platform for sharing my experience. Thank you very much to everyone. And now for our final speaker, you will hear from Dorcas Abu from Nigeria. Dorcas, over to you. Good afternoon. I am Nozdoka Stalatu Abu. I work with Niger State Primary Healthcare Development Agency in Nigeria. This afternoon, I'm going to share the Niger State experience uh, using the perspective on the reflection and action to improve self-reliance and effectiveness, the race too. In Ninja State, Nigeria, we use the RACE tool to uh, track progress in program coordination and implementation also in terms of resource management. The state has conducted four RACE assessment with the one scheduled for the last quarter. We had uh, various stakeholders that were part of the RACE assessment tool, as you can see. The journey so far in Ninja State using the RACE tool started in June 2020, when that was when the state was already leading the program implementation at that time with coaching and technical assi assistance that we received from TCI. The first race assessment result revealed a mature FP program with a score of 88%, while our AY program, that is the adolescent and youth, was behind at 63%. Ninja State in Nigeria transitioned to pre-graduation in July 2020. Three race assessments have been done so far within this period. The state noted remarkable improvement in its AYSRH program, now at 84%. The FP program also rec recorded some improvement, now at 92%. Ninja State is truly demonstrating self-reliance in FP stroke AYSRH programming as we are paying attention to improving the systems leading to increasing race indices. These are discussed so far for the first, second, third, and the fourth round. You will observe that in the first round for family planning, which is blue, we had 88% score. The second round, 91%. Third, 91%, while the fourth quarter we had 92%. While for adolescent and youth, the first round we had 63%, second, 79%, third, 79%, and the last quarter was 84%. Averagely, for both FA and AY programs, we had 76% for the first round, 85% for the second round, 85% for the third round. And luckily for us, 88% for the fourth round. How did this work for us in Ninja State, Nigeria? The state identified gaps in program management and technical operations. And we luckily discussed together and agreed on feasible action plans to identify the address gaps. 
and relevant persons were attached to key actions required and made them accountable for tracking implementation, as well as reporting on progress at the next race meeting before new assessment. With the identified gaps in mind, day-to-day -day coaching were focused on bridging the gaps that were identified. We also made in Niger State, Nigeria, efforts at sustaining gains and achievements. So we didn't encounter drop in scores for areas where we were already doing well. We also paid more attention to closing the gaps reported in our AYSRH program. So you will notice a significant increase from the baseline to the current status. These are just the extract of Niger State raised gaps and the action plan. We had a major gaps identified as little or no funding for AYSRH activities. And what did we do? We planned advocacy to key policymakers to prioritize funding for the AYSRH program for which the team received releases. We also had inadequate public private sector collaboration and we went ahead to collaborate with PPMVs and community pharmacies for AYSRH service delivery. Suboptimal so implementation of social behavioral change in communication and strategies and intervention was another major gap identified. And we went ahead to build and strengthen the capacity of the LJ health educators and community health providers on social behavioral change and communication. Weak referral services with unorganized referral systems. And we did strengthening of two-way referral systems and linkage of community mobilization activities to designated health facilities. Key learnings from the race implementation. Successful race implementation requires multisectoral collaboration. That is what we have learned. Race can be an objective method for program monitoring and tracking when properly implemented. Race is a valuable tool for advocacy, and it also ensures transparency and accountability that we have seen. Some gaps may require more time and resources to address them as such may not shift in the next quarter assessment. Race can be applied to other MSCH programs in the same manner that FBA and AYSRH were integrated. No assessment was conducted during the four months of COVID lockdown. COVID pandemic led to the review of strategy for the workshop. As such, we had bigger venue, adequate spacing, social distance, and face masks. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dorcas. And now for some closing remarks from Mahin Malik. Mahin, over to you. Thank you so much, Kate. So um, I would like to thank everybody who was able to join us today to attend this webinar. If you have qu questions, please feel free to reach out to us. Um, Kate Graham will post, um, you, you can send it to info at tciurbanhealth.org. The tool will be um, definitely available. It is available on our website, but we can also send it to all the attendees and the recording. Um, I know time is short and we won't be able to take more questions live, which was initially the plan. Um, however, if you have questions, just reach out. Um, something that I forgot to mention when I was speaking, one of it being recently then our Nigeria team was able to present the tool at the CURVE ceremony and had, our tool has won the CURVE award. The Curve Consortium is by MNC Sachi World Services, Howard T.H. Chen School of Public Health and Demagi, and supported by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Um, so that is another, I mean, it's, it's good to see that, you know, the tool has been recognized at other forums. Um, with that, I would like to thank everybody again for participating. We hope to hear more from you if you have questions. Um, thank you, everyone. Over to you, Kate. Thank you so much, Mimi. And thank you to everyone that's stuck with us throughout this webinar. We really appreciate it. I know there are some questions that we were unable to answer throughout this webinar. So again, we will try to get those answers to you. But with that, um, we, we're going to close out. And we thank you again for joining our RAISE webinar. Thank you to all of our panelists as well. 
from joining for uh, joining from all over. I know your time zones are very late, so we really appreciate your time as well. Thank you to Misha, to Larry, and to Gwen as well. And have a wonderful evening, morning, and afternoon.